walked into the forest not to return again. So much anger. Hey guys, it's me, Molly, the blind one, here again. And today we are reacting to the original music that I wrote back in high school. We all cringed together reacting to my old angsty teen band music, so I'll link that video down below when I kind of describe my music journey. But when I was 16, I left my angsty teen rock band partly because my boyfriend, the lead guitar player, and I broke up, and partly because when we started to try to write our own original music, they didn't like the type of music or the type of lyrics I was writing because I wanted to write about like meaningful things from my life and they wanted me to write about like basic things and I wasn't interested in that. So we parted ways and I started doing acoustic music and we're just gonna react to the first song off my debut EP, Let It Go. Here it is. Black and white made So this song, in case you haven't caught on by lyrics so far, when black and white fade to gray, is about my vision loss. So when I, this is like the first, so I wrote, the first original song I wrote was So Goodbye when I was with Audio Breakdown. But this was the like second original song I ever wrote, which is certainly nowhere near as cringy as the first. So already made a little bit of progress. But uh, I wrote three songs for my EP, or rather my EP was three songs long. And most artists, like Drake, Rihanna, whoever, like they write 30 songs and put 12 on an album. I wrote three and put on three. I don't know why I was just like, oh, I've written three. There we go, EP's done. Like, I don't know why I didn't write seven and then pick the best ones of those to put like three on the album. But this was the first song I wrote for the album, which is why it became like the debut, like the title of the album. Let it go. But yeah, it's about my vision loss and it might not be the greatest song in the world, but it means a lot to me because there's a lot of anger and passion and emotion that I felt towards my vision loss and the people who didn't believe me or didn't support me through that vision loss, like peers and teachers. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what this is about. And I loved when I wrote, like I loved taking like very popular quotes and twisting it into a song lyric or taking like metaphors. I loved making metaphors in music, so you'll hear a lot of that in my lyrics. It used to be crystal clear, but now it's just smoke and mirrors. Example right there. Don't know what, what you're doing, but the truth is neither do I. Close your eyes. whole thing is like because you know there was like people who didn't uh support me like my family my doctors that sick kids nobody ever questioned it because we had like medical proof of my eye disease and of my blindness but my peers and teachers like were really really awful to me during my vision loss and not everyone obviously but like a lot of people were really mean and so this is kind of like me two years later, so I lost most of my vision at 14. This is me at 16 being like, you know, close your eyes, let it go. There's so much that you don't know about it. Like just stop trying to figure me out and figure out my situation. I don't even know what's happening to me. Like you just need to let it go. And then saying like, there's so much I could show you now. Like it's two years later, I'm a stronger person and there's a lot that I could teach you. And that's kind of like the idea behind the song and what I'm saying like in the chorus part of it. So I'm just gonna do first verse and chorus for each song, but I will link my Molly's Music playlist below where you can hear the full versions of the three songs from my EP and then some covers that I've recorded since. Actually, there was one time when I um, performed that song. It's been five years since I've performed any of my music publicly, but the one time I performed that song, I literally forgot my own lyrics and 
the first verse also became the second verse because I like completely blanked on the second verse. Oh, it was the most cringy and embarrassing performance I ever did and I just crossed my fingers nobody at the event noticed, but it was pretty bad. Oh, I'm also gonna link a super cringy video down below if it's still on YouTube of me performing that song with a different bridge. It was like the original bridge, which I then changed before recording it. But it was when I was 16 and I had hot pink hair and I was performing in front of like 10,000 bikers. I'll link it below if I can find it. It'll be funny. Song two. One thing about my music is I took what should have been angry rock songs and made it acoustic and I don't, it doesn't sit well, you know? It doesn't mesh, but it's what I did. <laughs> to return again so much anger at least that's the tale their parents are telling who never wanted them so much anger this song was written about the lead guitar player in bury me fighting who uh like we we broke up so this was like about my first breakup so it's like you know about like, uh, you know, the parents is using like the fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel to express my own emotions and anger about my breakup. So like their parents who never wanted them, like he never wanted, you know, you get it, you get it. You can read in between the lines or the lyrics. Okay, that lyric, my friend makes fun of me for, he said I'll love you forever and I bought it because it was on sale. He makes fun of me so much for that lyric, but honestly, I think that is lyrical genius right there. I think that's a great line and I think that would make a great angsty post breakup teen Instagram caption. Am I right? I'm proud of that lyric. Of all my lyrics, that might be the lyric I am most proud of. And I bought it because it was on sale. All right, the next song was the last song on my EP and it was called Don't Walk Away and it was the like slow song, the less angry song of all, the more, the more like sad emotion versus anger. Um, so this song suits being acoustic more than the first two. Like I said, I feel like the first two I tried to take like, cause I came from being a part of a full rock band. So it's like, I had that vibe in me and I was still this like little scene emo kid, which I feel like maybe I need to bring back the emo kid. Cause emo Molly like slayed with the boys. 2009 emo Molly had like two Valentine's day boys. Two, two boys bought me gifts and asked me to be their girlfriends. I only said yes to one, don't worry. And uh, 2017, Molly on Valentine's Day spent it with my dog. So maybe emo Molly was like killing it a little bit more. Maybe I need to bring her back. But this song, yeah, was like less rock and more. I literally like the, the, the order they went on my EP was the order I wrote them. Let It Go was the first song I wrote. Happily Never After was the second song. Don't Walk Away was the third song. Boom, EP. <laughs> um, so yeah, this was about two different boys because one of them... I don't know, it wasn't inspiring me enough, so I needed to write it about two. Here we go. I can't breathe. I can't think. When you're around, it doesn't matter. That low note did not sound good. No. If I'm fine. What is real? Don't walk away from everything you know we are. Don't walk away from everything we should. your heart out Molly. So I think my favorite part of this song, if I have to pick a favorite part, is like in the bridge um, there's this line that I wrote and it's like could we lie a little longer until we're happy? And I really like 
when you listen to music and depending on who you are in your situation, you can like read that song a different way. And when I've talked to people about that song, like some people thought it meant like, could we lie here together a little bit longer until we're happy? And then other people thought it meant like, could we lie to ourselves a little bit longer until we convince ourselves that we're happy? And yeah, I think it's cool that like different people read into that lyric a different way. So I kind of, I don't know, if I have to pick like my favorite lyric from this song, that would be it. So when I went in to record my EP, I literally recorded all three songs in half an hour. Like, that's it. So like maybe 10 minutes a song. I think I sung each song two to three times to get like the take for the album, which is not like people usually record for a lot longer. So, you know, it's not killing it, but it's fine. <laughs> it was good enough for me. And I actually sold out of, I ordered 250 EPs to begin with. And I sold out of them. I sold them for $5 each. And I sold out of my 250 EPs in like less than two weeks. And when I put in for my reorder, the company I ordered my EP print through was like, couldn't believe it. And I was like, a little offended, ouch. I don't think it was because my music was so great though. I think it's just because I knew a lot of people <laughs> and forced them all to buy it. Um, so then there's one song that is unreleased. It's nowhere on YouTube. I've like it was gonna be the first song of my next EP and you can tell right away it is a completely different vibe. I wrote a couple songs for my second EP. This is the only one I actually like have a recording of and the second EP never came to fruition because I stopped writing music um, five years ago when I was 18. So the first three songs were all written when I was 16. This song is called Makes Me Smile and it was written when I was 17 and at this point in my life I was much like I was out of my like emo rock music phase like the first EP was like taking rock music and making it acoustic. This album, I was much more going for like a folky, chill, relax, positive, feel good vibe. Um, and it was, yeah, I was listening to a lot more of that kind of music, like that, like, you know, just feeling good, happy, positive, folky vibes, indie kind of music. And so that's kind of reflected in this song. And this is the only song I think that I would like if somebody else had written it because <laughs> I, I don't know I think it's a good song this is like the rough recording this is not a polished edited recording so it's the only recording I have though so we're going with this one here we go makes me smile <laughs> is like seasons and weather and nature related so the first verse is like winter and summer and the second one is spring and fall and it's about like the different things in those seasons that like make me smile or make me happy and then the chorus is obviously the seasons change the trees will grow the sun will shine um, and now the sky is clear the stars will shine and lead me home so it's basically I don't know this song makes me almost like feel emotional because I can hear my healing you know, like I listen to this song and I'm like, she's good. She's okay. She's going to be all right. And obviously here and now I know I'm fine and I know I'm all right and I know I made it, but I don't have a diary to read back on this. I just have memories and this and listening to these lyrics and listening to this music. It's like this Molly is so much happier and 14 year old Molly and 15 year old Molly and 16 year old Molly who wrote those other songs or who didn't write music but just like was in such a dark place never thought that Molly would get to writing a song called Makes Me Smile. And yeah, like the, the whole part about like the sky is clear. It's like my my life's clear, the future's clear and the stars will shine, they lead me home. Like all of these things that make me happy, these little things in life, like 
snowball fights on a winter's day and you know rain falling on a summer's eve these things they make me smile they make me happy and it's those little simple things in life that we need to cling to and i don't know so the whole song is about that and yeah just like finding my place in life and going home to that place of me and being authentic and genuine which is all i ever want to be in life is authentic and genuine and yes that's what this song is about and it really does make me smile it just makes me happy hearing my healing in music so that's why i really like that song still because it puts it puts all the pain I went through into like a really beautiful ending. So that is the unreleased song um, and would have been the first song on my next EP that never came to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed listening to that. And now it's time for a little giveaway. So I don't know if this is exciting or not. It's probably not. Nobody probably wants to win this giveaway, but I am giving away pretty much the only remaining unsold EP I have. I have one that's in my scrapbook that I shall keep, and then this is the only other one. I can't open it to show you the disc because it's sealed with a sticker so that it doesn't fall out. Um, but the, the CD inside just has the exact same print of my album cover, which obviously has Let It Go, and then a portrait of emo slicey hair Molly singing. And then on the back it has little birds and chains and the, you know, the copyright stuff and my songs written down. And Makes Me Smile is not on here, like I said, just the first three. So you can win that, these stickers that are also go along with the cover, and this little keychain, which is a red keychain. On the back it says Molly Burke and the word happy. And on the front it says happy in braille. You can actually feel it. It is raised. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but the braille's raised and it's a little keychain. Um, and I picked the one that says happy because happily never after came to a positive ending. Happy. So um, the giveaway is going to be going on on my Instagram at Molly Burke Official. It's always linked down below. So check that out. Go over to my Instagram. Photos being posted today with all the rules to apply for the giveaway. So hit that up. Uh, I think that's it for this video. Uh, thumbs it up if you enjoyed. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed. Thumbs it up if you didn't enjoy. Hit subscribe if you didn't enjoy because we don't discriminate here. We want you all to be part of the family and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.